Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online and on the go, this is Valley News Live 10 at 10. Heartbreaking. It's unfair. Really unfair. I mean, if I could give her my heart and her be fine, I would 100% for sure do it. It has already been a very long journey for a young girl and her family in Dilworth. Good evening and thanks for joining us. Mike has the evening off. At just two years old, a little girl named Ariana will undergo a major surgery after a fever led to a heart defect. One that the family says could have been prevented. Valley News Team's Krista Baim learned why the mother says it was a prescribed medication that has turned their lives upside down. Uh, Say well. cheese. Say cheese. This barely two year little grin is sure to melt a mother's heart. So <laughs> but smiles are a little more challenging to come by for Kylie Recent after learning her daughter's precious heart isn't so perfect. I thought it was just a fever and then. And then you're walking out th thinking, well, what's wrong with my kid, you know? <laughs> this is heartbreaking. I'm Boom. <laughs> Behind the warmth of Ariana's laugh lies a heart twice the size it should be, with two extra holes inside. A devastating diagnosis that her mom found out about only two months ago from an x-ray. But Reeson says the heart problem started far before Ariana was even born. When I was pregnant with Ariana, I was really sick. Um, I was throwing up all the time, couldn't keep down water or anything. It was very miserable. <laughs> Reeson asked doctors for help and in return prescribed her Zofran or Ondansetron, a medication prescribed to patients going through chemotherapy to stop nausea and sometimes used to help pregnant women too. A prescription that Reeson says could be the reason her daughter needs open heart surgery. They just told me to um, take it as needed um, whenever I felt nauseous, but it was the whole time that I felt nauseous, so I just continued to take it. I thought it was safe. Zofran is FDA approved using animal studies that came up clear, but one group was not tested in initial research. The FDA doesn't attend, doesn't uh, usually do um, pregnancy studies and new medications for the obvious reasons because you're putting pregnant mothers and their children at risk. It wasn't until recent years. The connection to pregnant women started raising red flags. Some incidental things on, on cuff palate, possibly. And heart defects, a problem doctors tell Reeson they're lucky they found now. Children that um, have this defect usually, um, it doesn't get caught until they're about 18 years old. And the only reason why they, it's caught is because the child has a stroke. A catch Ariana <laughs> barely understands. Show me your heart. But she'll keep smiling and melting everyone's heart, as two-year-olds do. Krista Bame, Valley News Live. Ariana's open heart surgery is scheduled for May. Family, friends, and even strangers are coming together every Tuesday to work on a benefit, which is scheduled for next month. For more information on that and how you can help, go to valleynewslive.com and click on this story. Well, a mother is seeking justice after her six-year-old son was hit by an ATV and the accused isn't behind bars. Police found the 23-year-old woman and 22-year-old man accused of driving away on their four-wheeler. But they aren't in jail and prosecutors say that they don't know what charges they could be facing. Six-year-old Jackson Heinzelman was running across the parking lot at the Pelican Supper Club when he was hit by a four-wheeler and he had these injuries. Jackson's mom, Ashley, says the worst part the driver didn't stop to help her son. The next morning he said, why didn't the four-wheeler stop? And I didn't know what to tell him. And it, I was so angry, I just wanted to find out who did it. We reached out to the driver of the ATV and she tells us simply she's sincerely sorry for what happened on Sunday. And if you ever need help uncovering fraud or corruption in your community, call our whistleblower hotline and we'll do our very best to get to the bottom of it. Just call 701-237-6576 and a member of our investigative team will go to work exposing the truth for you. All horse races this summer are canceled. That's from the North Dakota Racing Commission today regarding the North Dakota Horse Park in Fargo for the 2015 season. The owners of the horse park owe nearly $1.82 million in taxes to the city of Fargo. The repayment was supposed to begin March 1st, but 
no payments been made and no plan has been presented to them to make payments. The Racing Commission said today they will not issue a license this year, but Fargo Commissioner Dave Pepcorn says he sees a lot of potential for the racetrack. It's a diamond in the rough, and so I hope that we get the opportunity because I think that it could be very successful. And obviously NDSU has their horse uh, training there, and also riding on angels' wings is a, is a group that's interested in, in locating out there. So there's a lot, of, a lot of potential good things. The horse park made a big comeback in 2012 with thousands of racing fans breaking a record with the highest bet total. Well, after opening up bids today for the possible construction of a new city hall, officials found that they have a lot to talk about. Valley News Team's Haley Foster tells us why there may be a few changes being made to some blueprints. City hall bids opened in the Fargo City Commission chambers. 23 million. And the totals were a little higher than expected. 31 million, 148,000. That's staggering. That, that's such a large number. Well, it's a disappointment. It's 10% higher than we had wanted. What we will redo at this time is work with the architect and our engineering staff and our team to figure out where can we save some money. Bids were separated into three categories, general construction, mechanics, and electrical. Altogether, the lowest offers were still $3 million over budget. We're in a very... Um competitive construction market with especially with the two hospitals uh, being built right now um, that has um, driven some prices up. Mayor Tim Mahoney says a lot of the extra costs come from site preparation. Because they're building along the river, steel beams are needed to build a deeper foundation. Some officials are saying that moving the location of City Hall could save a lot of money and help with budgeting problems. What I would like to see us do is to look at uh, acquiring one of the buildings in downtown Fargo and repurposing it. But others disagree. If you move it somewhere else, if somebody commercially comes in here, they're going to have to pay for those costs. And for the city to do that on our own land is probably the wisest thing. Soft soil isn't the only factor draining money from the budget. The other thing we're doing a lot of at this site is kind of going the extra mile to make sure the city hall is flood proof and uh, those kind of things. So there's some issues there that probably cost us some dollars. In downtown Fargo, Haley Foster, Valley News Live. Both Mayor Mahoney and Terry Stroh say one of the first cost efficient changes that they can make would be cutting out the $590,000 geothermal heating and cooling system. This group will now present this to the full commission and they have to have a plan in place by March 30th. After a decade of deficits, Minnesota state leaders are now facing a $1.9 billion budget surplus created by Minnesota's growing economy. Governor Mark Dayton's supplemental budget proposal would invest the surplus in free universal pre-kindergarten for all four-year-olds and increased funding for every K-12 public school in Minnesota. His proposal would also deliver $187 million in tax credits for child care and working families and raise wages for low-income working families for the first time in nearly 30 years. Many eager Dragon fans came out to Buffalo Wild Wings in Moorhead to watch the MSUM viewing party. They had quite the show tonight. They showed their support for MSUM's basketball team as they took on Northwest Missouri State in the Central Region Championship. And guess what? They are going to the Elite Eight for the very first time in program history. Congrats to MSUM. Of course, Beth is going to have much more on this coming up later on in sports. Valley News Live 10 at 10 continues with no wait weather. It's been an exciting day. Started off with northern lights this morning. Lots of green just in time for St. Patrick's uh -huh. Day. Joshua Eckel took this up around the Grand Forks area, this time lapse. It's just gorgeous. A lot of vivid, intense color there and mm -hmm. more tonight. Yes. And we are hearing from some of our viewers that they are starting to see them. <gasps> That's up, wonderful. Yes, up around the Grafton area yeah. and also a viewer as far south as Wapaton. Oh, wow. Also starting to see the northern lights. The concern is clouds yeah. uh, that are moving in, but if you can get out and enjoy them, I suggest I you do so. so. They're strong. Yeah. It's a strong storm that's uh, causing these uh, uh, northern lights for us for tonight. So let's take a look at our uh, radar satellite composite.
Here's the concern. You can see the gray showing up on the satellite loop there. Uh, that's where the cloud cover is, and it's been moving in uh, gradually throughout the evening hours. The good thing here is that mostly it's been some high, thin cloud cover, so we've been able to see a little bit of sky uh, between that, but uh, it can, it's going to continue moving in, and it's going to continue to thicken up, too. So over toward the James River Valley, it may be tougher for you to enjoy uh, the aurora, but otherwise, if you're north and over toward uh, the east, you have better bets of seeing it and it is active right now. Southern Valley, there are also some pockets of clear skies as well. So if you're patient, have a little time tonight. Might be a good night to head out to enjoy this with that rain out to the west. That's that next system that's going to be moving in. You'll need to bundle up though. Temperatures are in the 20s and 30s. We're at 33 degrees in Fargo. Up north and out to the west, 29 in Grand Forks and 28 in Valley City and Jamestown. Over toward the east, we're closer to freezing in Bemidji at 32 and 34 in Detroit Lakes and in Fergus Falls. Right now, the wind has lightened up quite a bit, too. So, again, active aurora out there tonight. The cloud cover going to continue moving uh, eastward through the nighttime hours as it runs into a little drier air mass. It's going to take some time making its way into northwestern Minnesota. So we may be clear all night over toward Bidette and Roseau. You may get a great show uh, through the overnight hours tonight. This is 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. Cloud cover over the southern valley and basically most of western, our western viewing area in eastern North Dakota. Temperatures a little milder than last night. We were in the teens to start off the day today. Tomorrow, we'll see some 20s and low 30s. Where we're clear, though, temperatures may get down into the teens once again uh, for tonight. So that would be up around Lake of the Woods. Now into the afternoon, the system that's approaching, we're going to be seeing the moisture start to move in. First in the James River Valley, some scattered rain showers. Our precipitation type is going to be mainly on the side of rain, it looks like, but there is a chance that it could briefly switch over to snow at times. More likely the snow well out to the west in western parts of North Dakota and Montana where they could get a several inches of snow accumulating there. As we move into the afternoon, temperatures rising into the mid to upper 40s in a lot of places. Some spots stuck in the upper 30s underneath the clouds uh, with rain showers ongoing in the valley. And again, a couple of pockets where we may be seeing some light snow. This will continue lifting north and eastward and impacting us even into the nighttime hours tomorrow night. So off and on scattered chances for mixed precipitation should be pretty light for the most part, uh, except for maybe up around Lake of the Woods where things will be dry for much of the time. Here's a look at our extended planner. Expect to see temperatures on Thursday back into the upper 40s with perhaps some lingering sprinkles or snowflakes and looking ahead into the weekend cold high temperatures Ooh. in the mid to upper 30s for highs with often on periods of light rain to light snow okay. possible uh, in the extended planner but otherwise looking quiet and a little cooler than we have been we can handle it yes all right thanks lisa well still ahead for us tonight it's not just regular banks getting in on the money action the big box retailer getting into the game but first a recall of walnuts why this tasty treat could make you very sick